As EAL staff know, assessing speaking and listening is a difficult area to get right. Here we see how a new method of assessment is being introduced across a school. This new way of assessing speaking and presentation can help inform the teacher's future planning and assist the pupil's language development. In ongoing CPD, EAL expert Ross Ferrara is working with class teacher Sally McAvoy on this new approach. The main problems for EAL learners in developing speaking and listening are that they tend to reach a stage of language development where they sound okay, where they're using everyday language very fluently and this masks the learning that they haven't done for the higher order academic language and it's very important that we build in opportunities for focused language learning in our lessons. In this programme, Sally and Ross team teach problem solving and collaborative practice and try out a new assessment framework. These activities provide opportunities for EAL staff to assess the pupils' creativity and problem solving, idea organisation and vocabulary, sentence structure and presentation skills. Then we chose a gun so that we could shoot the crocodiles and spiders. Today's lesson allows them to work collaboratively and use exploratory talk initially and then use the more formal, higher order language that they need for, for learning. And your problem is, you have to travel across the island on the path to the treasure chest. The objectives of the lesson were to solve a problem working together as a group and then to present that solution as a group. And the children had a task to do, they had a picture of an island and their task was to move across the island and collect a treasure chest which was at the far end of the island and then take it back to their ship by sea and they had the option of choosing five objects which would help them to move across the island and transport this treasure chest back to the sea. So it was quite a, a mystery solving exercise for them to do. There were lots of um, hazards on the way through this island and then the actual problem of transporting this very heavy tre treasure chest by water. What might be a useful object that I might need to help me. What do you think, Miss McElroy? What, what well, might we need, first of all? We have to go along that path. Is that, they're cactuses, aren't they? Yes, they're cactuses. So what so are we going to do about those, do you think? Well, the, you have to get through them, so I mm. think you'll need to cut them down, won't you? So OK, so what could we use then to cut them down? Um, I don't know, what do you think? Um, pair of scissors? Mm, I don't think a pair of scissors would work. Machete. A machete. Mm. Mm. An axe or some sort of sword. Right? Modelling uh, the first part of the lesson is very important for EAL pupils. You need to show them what they've got to do. And the fact that we've given them a hands-on activity is also very important. You need to base what the children are doing in a real experience. It was lucky that I was with Sally and we were able to model that, not only the activity, but the collaborative part of that. If you haven't got somebody to partnership teach with, obviously you, you can't do that. But you could do it with your TA, or I've also done it with um, an able English speaker who can help you model that activity. So it is possible to do it. This type of lesson is really useful for all the children because there aren't many opportunities like this when we can develop a situation where we can assess effectively the speaking and listening of all the pupils in the class. Traditionally, uh, the problem solving areas are difficult for EAL pupils and this is a very nice way of beginning to develop both the language and thinking skills required for that sort of work. Why don't we collect um, the log here and we bring it here and then we go across and then we bring the log and then we we'll make the boat here and we we'll sit on it and we we'll put the treasure on it and so the, the problems in my class and I found in speaking and listening um, is that some children cannot organise their ideas. They, um, they've got lots to say, you know, the, the class isn't a quiet class and there's so many uh, bubbly personalities, even the EAL children, they're not shy. However, their ideas are disorganised and they have so much to say and they get really frustrated. As oh, I can't remember the word, or, oh, that's what, and then the other children tend to chip in and they do get really disheartened by that. In an activity like this, everyone has equal footing uh, and have their own input. It was really interesting and really eye-opening to go around the groups and actually see 
the children that have the input because actually they're not always the most able. So do you think you need something sharp then? Something sharp? So what, what could you have then? Pausing is important. EAL children often will have difficulty in actually formulating the language that they want to use. They need that wait time to actually work out the language in their head. I want to use an axe and knife. Is it the crocodile? No. You can't. Which way? This way or that way? You can't. Well done, keep going. That way, that's. That one's very difficult because what you can do is you get a brush. Get a board though. Or, another boat there. Leave it there. The first part of the lesson was involved in exploratory talk, working through different types of language, giving each other specific vocabulary, making suggestions, and that was this very sort of fragmented speech. It's disorganised, it's spontaneous, it's all part of the thinking process. Uh, they then moved on. Once they'd filled in their ideas onto the key visual, they then had a talk planner. Uh, this was structured with particular types of language and what we focused on in the talk planner there was the use of uh, explanatory language and sequential connectives so that they were actually ordering how they'd done things but also explaining the reason for their particular choices. And if you want to write it as a group, or if anyone stands out that's quiet or is not, you know, just write. At this point in the lesson, Sally and her TA start the assessing process. Well, then you can prompt that. Okay, okay yeah. you'll prompt that. I was focusing with one group on one area of speaking and listening and my TA was focusing on another group. I found a lot out about the children's speaking and listening abilities um, by taking a back seat and, and looking at the, the assessment sheet and looking for the prompts. The way the children worked initially in the group, how they uh, came to the problem, how they discuss their ideas and refine them, um, and then the process of actually presenting back. My TA was assessing the uh, collaborative element of speaking and listening, so how they approached the task, how they um, talked about their ideas. This activity gives them a chance to actually use forms of language structures that you have chosen around a type of language, a particular function, and they are being, if you like, forced to use that language. So they get a chance to actually practice it, to refine it, review it, and rehearse it. It's that focused opportunity to look. It brings up all sorts of things that you missed. Yeah. Great, fantastic. And then we might just say then, we didn't have any problems. We worked together. Why didn't you have any problems? Because we worked as a team. Excellent. Very good. Our teamwork today I thought was very good. We were able to work together modelling and demonstrating to, to show the children what they had to do. It also gave me a chance to support Sally in actually using this new assessment sheet that, that we're trialling. Um, and gave her an opportunity to have a look at that and use it with a group of children. The school have had a fairly um, long training programme for me, regular staff meetings with input, but what has happened is I've come in and worked with teachers in planning and delivering lessons, observing lessons, to actually support that new learning that they've had so that they can then comfortably take it away and continue the work by themselves and that's been key to the success in this school. It's really important as well to 
uh, try and filter down these ideas and it was to have a nice opportunity for Ros to be there to support me when I was actually using uh, the material, the assessment sheet and not just hand it to me and uh, you know have a go at using it. So. Um, and I was quite surprised how, how easy it was to use. I'm looking as forward as much as everybody else is to hearing all these different solutions. And I'm going to be asking you, after each group has presented their solution, to give me one thing that you thought was really good. We used a machete to cut down the cactus and to kill the snake. We came from the ship. Can I just stop you a minute? Can you use this? This is what we're going to use for you to feed back. So you don't need to show people that, but I'd like you to use this to actually tell everybody what you did. You can use your, your map and you can use this as well, but you need to use the language on there, OK? When children feed back, often it's very disorganised yeah. type of language, not using whole sentences. Yeah. So giving children an activity like this is really the rehearsal for writing so that work like this, although this was a spoken outcome today, it could feed into a written activity tomorrow. When they were presenting, because I had was monitoring and being able to lead the presentation, I could take a back seat to monitor their presentation skills and I managed to do that with all six groups. The marking really is your assessment, which is done immediately. OK, let's see which group should we have next. Using this kind of assessment activity, is a way of informing your future planning. You're looking at what the children can do, what they perhaps didn't do so well, and that gives you the next steps that you will put into your planning the next time. Fantastic idea as well, well done. I would like to see them coming away from reading uh, the talk planner and, and internalising it more and using it as, as, as if it looks like and it sounds like it's part of their everyday language. First of all, we chose an axe so that we could cut down the cactus. Object two, rock. Secondly, we decided on a rope so that we could pull ourselves over the rocks. Object three, gun. Then we chose a gun so that we could shoot the crocodiles and spiders. Everywhere I've done it, the children have clung on to talk planners, but in schools where they've begun to use it more, the children are less, become less reliant on it and are actually internalising the language and beginning to use it themselves independently, and that's the way that we need them to go. OK, who's got something positive to say about that, something that they liked about the solution or the way that they presented it? You can see that they've reversed it. You could see that they'd rehearsed it, you could, couldn't you? It was very, very clear, very, very nicely presented. But I like the idea about the fact that you'd thought about something that you knew about, you knew about what people might need to use for rock climbing and you used that idea to solve your problems. I just think that you did really well and um, I can see that you've learned lots of language today and I think it was you, Lou, that said that you could hear that you'd rehearsed it and the big difference when you actually use a planner to think about what you're going to say because it's hardly taken us any time to present back and usually our presentations take a lot longer than this because maybe we haven't rehearsed it as well as we can do so it's something that we need to think about for the future. It's nice for you to, to be there and do the control so I can do the assessing side yeah. but it, it could be manageable termly to actually mm. and, or maybe slim down the assessment sheet or take the children and then let my TA go away and mm. fill in the sheet at mm. another time. Mm. Yeah, that's good. For examples of the assessment resources from this programme, go to www.teachers.tv.